Welcome on board the brand new Beneteau First 24. Uh, my name is Tit Pleunik and today I've prepared for you the complete walkthrough of the boat. Building the 40 years of Beneteau First heritage, the seventh incarnation of the of First Range is still staying true to its original mission, delivering accessible and modern sailing experience. Naval architect with a racing background had characterized the new first range with modern, fast and planning hulls. Manato First 24 is a unique day sailor, micro cruiser or a club racer uh, and it's a modern answer on really numerous fleet of boats in, it, in this length category which is really outdated and there was no real replacement recently so we designed this boat as a true people's boat so on one hand side, the families will go cruising, you will enjoy exciting uh, day sailing and of course we are certain that she will bring home trophies for the club racers. During the entire video, take the opportunity of this 360 degree video format. So I've actually prepared a virtual reality tour of the boat. In the first part, we will check the interior of the boat and all the cruising features that the boat has to offer. And then in the second, uh, we will set the sails and enjoy this magnificent early spring uh, day on the Slovenian coast. Welcome inside the Beneteau First 24. Um, the main feature of this interior is that it's all one big open space, as you can see. And on top of that, we really made sure that there is enough light, uh, light here. It might look minimalistic, but there is a clear, clear reason for it. So during the whole design process of the boat, we were very weight sensitive. And that's because what happens with most of the boat is that then the interior actually kills the sailing potential of the boat because it's too heavy. But that doesn't mean that the boat is not suitable for cruising, far from that. We just approach it in a little bit different way. One of the ways how we achieved uh, significant weight reduction reductions is that um, the interior um, is functioning as a structure of the boat as well and it's completely vacuum infused. So for example these benches are of course functioning as a limit storage place behind it and the bench on the top in submersibility as well but these are also longitudinal reinforcements of the boat. It's important to know that this interior is completely separated from the storage under the cockpit in the back. So this is the, the, all the technical equipment which usually smells and have just or it's dirty. It's stored there. So this is really for cruising. So your personal belongings, food and, and living on board. Before I move to the actual cruising features, um, here is the electric panel. With, with where you control, control the 12 volt uh, installation and also the battery is, is um, hidden all the way in the back. Um, here it's uh, what comes as standard, it's a practical storage box uh, and here on the other side where you, um, there is a place for a chemical toilet. This is by itself nothing special except about the fact that um, Chemical toilets are on most of other boats on the market stored under the front. We birth basically under your, your pillow, which we believe that it's absolutely basically unacceptable solution. That's why we made sure that the, the, uh, the porta potty, the chemical toilet fits in here. Uh, and, um, and also it's basically fixed with the width of the space here. So just in the start, I mentioned a lot of light. So the interior really is really bright. A lot of ventilation to the front hatch and the companionway, plus that you have these big side windows. So altogether, a lot of light in the interior, which gives you additional feeling of being connected to the outside, to the nature, and of course, about the volume of the interior. And then when the night falls, there are ambiational lights uh, around the, um, the edge of the ceiling. You might be surprised, but this boat is unsinkable because there are three separated insubmersibility chambers. So one, it's on each side from here to the back 
on, on, on both sides and under entire volume of the front wheel berth. And this makes, uh, this is, it's twice as the displacement of the boat is, so this boat is actually, it's really unsinkable, but that doesn't mean that there is not enough uh, storage space. So under the benches, from here where I sit, all the way to the front wee berth, there is sufficient big storage place on both sides, easily accessible, and this is usually meant for both technical equipment, maybe food, water, things like that. But then for your personal belongings, we've developed very light um, crew bags, which are also very practical. So you can, the idea of these crew bags is that you easily take them home. So when you're on the boat, you open it like that. And then when you want to leave home, you take it with you, you pack at home. So when you come on board, you move in by simply hanging on the back on the attachment points and that's it. It's a very practical solution because you don't need to repack in the car or here and at the same time you avoid the bags which are sliding around usually ending up on the floor so it's hard to walk and so on. So we've been thinking about it and of course the bags are also water repellent so if you take them out and there is some and if it's raining or whatever it's no problem. One of the very unique uh, comfort features in this boat are these uh, sliding berth extensions. So when it's pulled all the way forward, like you can see it on the other side, it gives you extra width just, direct, just where you need it. So for your shoulders and arms, uh, so that's how you achieve very wide uh, berth here and also a wide and comfortable berth here for two persons, one on each side. Um, of course, you can move it away when you don't need it. And this is mid position where you sit here. So it's comfortable sitting position and also very handy uh, to, 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 to use it um, for the table, to, for eat at the table, because it's exactly here. Um, and of course, when you don't need it, you just simply store it all the way in and it's completely out of the way. The center part of the interior is taken by the kill box all along. Um, so, of course, it's a handy step here um, in front when you, when you enter the boat. The central part is taken uh, by the table. So it's a uh, it's foldable table uh, fixed with this screw, which I'm just, uh, just opening. And the main, main benefit of this way of fixation is that uh, there is nothing underneath. So even if the table is open, like now, there is nothing under and I can really easily move around. You saw that it can be also half open like it was on the start, or you can completely fold it down. Uh, if When you don't need it, um, there is also a back coming with this option. So all the extensions goes in here and the table sits nicely in the back, protected, and then you can store it either in the back or here on the side. If we move, um, if we move forward, uh, here uh, we, we have the kill winch. Uh, so this is where you control the, control the, 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 the swinging kill system. Uh, it's a warm wind system. Um, and uh, what is special about it is the way how the, the warm winch is connected to the kill. And this is with the Dyneema rope. So that means that in case you would hit the ground, the kid would swing back and you would save the structure of the boat. So actually this skill system is partly also one of the safety features of the boat, because even if you ground it, you would need to hit really, really hard to damage the, the structure of the boat. And of course this is big, big, uh, big, big thing, uh, because we all know that sooner or later it happens. Uh, the kill winch is operated with the winch handle the same as you use outside for the sail controls. Uh, it's having quite high gear, so we've been thinking that basically all the crew members, uh, so even the kids can operate the kill because this is a family cruiser. Uh, so it takes more turns, but it's really easy. So, I mean, I just want to demonstrate it here. Whichever way I turn it, I can do it with, with two fingers. Here is the inspection glass. Uh, and that's where you control the position of the kill. So the, the rope is marked in most up and most down position. You cannot sail, um, you cannot sail with any uh, intermediate positions. It, kill needs to be down when you're out on the water, but you can have the boat on the mooring with the kill all the way lifted. 
You can have the keel lifted up on the, moor on the shallow mooring, uh, but there are many, many other applications of this uh, keel system. So if we start on the water, uh, beside the shallow mooring, it gives you access to new, to the places you you were not able to visit before because you had um, you had too much draft. So when the keel is all the way in, when it's called completely retracted, uh, the draft of the boat is about 25 centimeters. So that means that you can go in really shallow base. <laughs> Theoretically, you could even beach the boat if you protect the the the, the bottom with some some foam or something. And in any case, you walk off the boat. So in cruising, this is completely new, new, uh, this gives you completely new freedom and opportunities. Um, of course, uh, swinging kill system from the performance side allows us to have uh, excessive draft of two meters, which is really a lot for seven meter 30 uh, of a boat. And then, um, the system is made in a way that when the kill is up or down, it's not interfering the interior at all. So this is very important when you're maybe comparing uh, the, it with the other boats because many other boats are having vertical lift system uh, or they need some special constructions which you usually keep on the trailer. Uh, here you're taking everything with you anytime and in the interior nothing happens and there will be no water coming in and there will be no wall in the middle of the, inter uh, of the interior <laughs> because basically on cru in, in the cruising um, you need, you need uh, kill lifted when you are mostly also using the interior so like in the evenings, afternoons uh, when you go to sleep and you're in some shallow bay. But that's not all, because the, the swinging kill system gives you many, many advantages also on the land. So uh, if we just, all the manipulation, moving around mid the boat, trailing, it's so much easier. So the boat kill completely retracts, that means the slip launching is easy, because the boat is not high on the trailer. Low, low center of, gra of the weight on the trailer means that the boat is easily trailable, because it really sits just above the wheels and there is nothing in between. Um, and of course, this means that you can discover places you always wanted to with your own boat. So you can move around um, even in different to different countries or so. And at the same time, this is decreasing your running costs of the boat, because out of season, you don't need to have it in the marina or on some supports or in the water on the even more expensive berth, but you can have it basically parked on your trailer in the uh, in your backyard or in some garage which is much much more convenient and um, and cheaper i will finish the interior presentation with the with the front berth as you can see it's really long it gets narrow in the corner but you will see when i lay down it it's more than sufficiently long uh, when you use it you of course can easily move away the bowsprit so that um, it's not on the way. And what I do when I sleep here in the front, I also move away the, 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 the crew back here. So I gain a little bit more, a little bit more uh, width here. Uh, and when I lay inside, you can see that it's, I'm pretty tall and this is more than decent berth with still quite some extra room uh, in the front. Just above it, there is a ventilation, so the huge hatch for ventilation, an extra light, so really cozy and comfortable setup. In the meantime, I've moved the table, which was previously here on the top of the kill box. I'm going outside to the same table, just with a little extension. Uh, so this is how you use it outside. So you have four birds, two of them here on the side are even wider than on most of the boats. To the decent front uh, front wee bird, you have the place for the chemical toilet, which is not under your pillow, which I think it's a pretty good thing. Uh, there are bags for your personal belongings, which are also removable, so another smart solution. You have sp um, storage for the technical equipment inside here, as well as under the cockpit in the back. Um, there is table used inside or outside again. So this, I'm, I believe that boat is really answering this uh, this basic comfort needs. Keep in mind we are still in 24 feet boat, and um, yes, it's trailable, it's unsinkable, 
And what's most important, it's really uh, delivering uh, exciting sailing experience. Uh, it's modern planning sailing boat. And this is what I'm going to show you next. The forecast for today is uh, pretty light. And uh, to show you how easy the boat is to handle, uh, I will sail uh, single-handed uh, for, for, today for today's walkthrough. Uh, while we are leaving the marina, let me touch some uh, technical details and the building uh, and give you some insight on the building technology behind this boat. Uh, so the, the, the naval architect Samuel Manuart is having a very strong racing background in offshore offshore racing with, with amazing results. And um, this can be also well seen in the way how this boat is designed and how it's built. So if, if we first touch, first touch the building technology, uh, the entire boat, the hull, deck, bulkheads, even the keel is vacuum infused um, with the vinyl ester resin and the PVC foam uh, in the core of the sandwich construction. And this gives you very, very light but stiff, uh, stiff hull and deck, so the structure of the boat. On the design side, the, the boat is marked with very modern hull shape. So that means the, the hull is relatively flat on the bottom with, uh, with sharp chines relatively low above the sea level. So this means that the, the, the boat is, um, is relatively wide on the water, on the water uh, line. And this is what generates this initial hull stability. Uh, so this in practical terms, so the, from when you're sailing out on the water, means that the boat gives you some time to react when it starts to heal, when the gust comes, it starts to heal slowly and gives you time to react. And this is very important for, for relaxed and safe sailing. Uh, so mentioning safety, the next key point that we can say that the boat is safe is the stability of the boat. One, one, one source of it is the initial hull stability, so the way how the hull is designed. Uh, and then, of course, the second um, very obvious one is the kill. So, thanks to the swinging kill system, which I explained uh, in the uh, when we were checking the interior, these boats can have a significant draft of 2 meters, uh, which is really a lot for 7 meter 30 boat. And this means that the kill can be relatively lighter compared to some other boats, and, uh, and because it can be very deep. And that, uh, ha, ha, additionally, also coming from the from the from the high end racing, is the way how the kill is built. So the entire fin of the kill is vacuum infused and composite. So usually you have a, you have a steel center um, structural element in the kill, and then the lead on the bottom. In the case of first 24, we have the composite fin and then the lead insert on the bottom. And this, of course, means that the weight is really concentrated very, very low, uh, very, very low on the bottom of the kill on two meters. And that allows us to, to, to save some additional weight because the kill can be light, the, the bulb and, uh, and can, be, can be lighter um, because of the design. So before we hoist the sails, I need to touch the rig. Uh, so the boat is equipped with relatively standard standard solutions. So it's aluminum Selden um, Selden rig. Um, boom is positioned relatively high, so that you have um, easier easier maneuvering uh, underneath. Uh, the furling jeep comes, of course, as a, as, a, as a, comes as a standard equipment, and the mainsail is on uh, on um, on well-known plastic sliders in the groove of the mast. So as you can see, we have really fantastic sailing conditions today. It's about seven, maybe eight knots of wind. Uh, and before we open the sails, I would just like to touch uh, the, the, the cockpit area and, uh, and the storage place in here, because entire, uh, entire area under the cockpit is one huge space practically divided with the structural reinforcement so that the things are not uh, sliding around and this is place where you will store all your uh, fenders, ropes, all marine equipment, anchor in the back um, and also the engine. Uh, for today uh, afternoon sailing I will simply leave it on the stern because it's no need to move it in but this is where the, even the six horsepower petrol engine fits, fits in. The sea breeze is nicely building up and uh, 
It's time to hoist the sails, right? Veneto First 24 is featuring really spacious and open cockpit. As you can see, it's almost half of the boat length. And this is this is why this is because you spend you spend here most of your time when you're on the water uh, and on the boat. So uh, it's very important how it's shaped. Uh, so as you can, first front half, that's where I'm sitting at the moment. It's wider. So this is because. Uh, this gives you a more comfortable sitting position and also if you'll be cruising or even lay down uh, this width is very welcome uh, and at the same time uh, wider benches here gets you closer to the to the table uh, so that the, the outside table uh, really becomes practical then um, while the back it's a little bit more narrow uh, why I'm pointing out that is that even though the, bend, the, the shape of the bench is changing, you have very nice and good foot support here, uh, dedicated also for the, for the, for the half, um, for the half part. So the deck organization and the control lines are carefully thought out. Uh, on first hand, we wanted to get rid of all the systems that are not really necessary and are complicating, uh, complicating the deck, or deck organization and the system. Uh, and on the other hand side, we wanted to make sure that the ropes are not too heavy to operate so that you can really easily trim it. So for that reason, for example, like with the Canningham and Vank, you have a lot of purchases uh, so that you can, you, can control the, you can control and trim the main without using the winches, because there are just two winches, which is for sure sufficient. Uh, and that goes thanks to minim minimized number of, of ropes and also the winch feeders. So as you can see here at the moment, I've cross-sheeted the jib. So actually now in sailing solo, from this <laughs> less than one square meter, I'm in reach of all the controls I need, right? I have the tiller extension here, I have the mainsail sheet, the jib is cross-sheeted here on the, on the windward, and I can really easily, without any problem, trim it. Uh, then, of course, from here I'm in reach for the Canada, for the bank, uh, and the and the outhaul for the mainsail trim. And if I would need to need to do some uh, like tension, some halyards or anything, that's also everything here. So that that's why this this cockpit is really work uh, functioning well in short-handed or uh, or solo configuration um, of course on the other hand side we cannot uh, we cannot i need to mention again that um, the easy handling of this boat on one hand side of course comes from the deck organization but the, but the key but the key um, source or why this boat is easy to handle is the how it's designed so the hull shape which which gently reacts on the on the gusts and of course on the other hand side the stability of the boat with very deep keel with weight concentrated very low under the water two meters don't forget that it's it's really ex uh, extensive draft uh, and of course the steering system so the boat is having twin rudder blades uh, as you can see now when they have the boat balanced I, it's 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 boat is going straight almost by itself. I just do some very small corrections. Uh, it's really light uh, and uh, and it gives you perfect control. Of course, at the moment that's nothing so special, uh, but when the wind picks up and the boat starts to heal, uh, one rudder blades uh, get remains vertical and gives you perfect, complete control, no matter the healing angle. So it's really hard to broach this boat. So to not just talk about uh, easy handling and uh, uh, let me show you in the, in, let, me, let me show you how the boat works in action. So I'll do a simple tack now. I've changed the tiller. Before, I open this side. And here we go. So really easy and as you can see I'm not using the winch handle at all. It's still possible to do everything 
uh, on hand with hands. Uh, so we go back on the previous stack to give you back the good viewing angle. So as you can see, the boat really functions well in solo setup. It's the things are on place at hand. It's it, there. There are no big forces. Everything runs smoothly. Um, but of course, it's also important how, if we are saying that this is a club racer. It's also important how the boat would behave in a fully crewed setup. Uh, and yes, in this case, the great thing is that this cockpit, as it is, can easily uh, um, welcome the crew of four for some club races, for example. Uh, and it's, and uh, it also functions very well. So you would have the, main, the, the helmsman here in the back, the mainsail trimmer on this position. Uh, where I'm sitting now, this is usually the jib trimmer position. And at least one, but probably two persons um, in some longer upwinds will end up here on the on, on the side and this is also my favorite position especially for sun cruising uh, because you can really comfortably sit here and and enjoy the enjoy the nature and the sea so so far we've been sailing uh, upwind and here the boat speed is defined by the boat length uh, and that's very simple physics behind it. Uh, of course, the, the, the true potential and the main difference of, of this, uh, of this um, new first line is its planning potential in downwind. Uh, we're of course not surfing between the waves uh, uh, in the downwind part, but I'm still sure that you will see how well the boat reacts and how pl uh, pleasant, uh, pleasant it is to, 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 to sail and steer. Uh, so I will prepare the Janneker and then uh, move your point of view back on the stern because from there you can best see what, uh, what I would like to show you and uh, what I will talk about. So welcome back with a view from the stern. In the meantime I've prepared the Janneker, the fractional one. And uh, let's have some fun and hoist it. So in this downwind part, I would like to show you the, the, how, how fun this boat is to sail, right? Uh, we can have, if you are willing to play and you want some performance, you can always push it a little bit higher and you can see that the boat is really immediately accelerating, right? As soon as you go a little bit higher, the boat speeds up and also every puff that comes gives you acceleration. And here is where it comes the one of very important differences uh, between the planning boats and displacement boats. Uh, and that is that um, at the displacement boats, which are too heavy and the hull shape doesn't allow them to, to actually start gliding. All these forces, all extra wind speed or the, the, the wind strength is resulting in the forces inside the system, inside the boat and on the ropes. And on these light modern planning boats, all this extra power is transformed into speed. And that means that uh, the, 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 the wet means that results in the much easier handling of the boat. As you can see that it's a really, it's a real uh, pleasure to steer and sail with this, with these boats because it's so rewarding. Every gust, every puff gives you extra, give you some extra speed. And you can see that we are not that far from this first stage of, first stage of planning if you look on the stern. And uh, even if the boat is healing, like if I would push it even higher, the stability and of course the steering system allows me that the forces are not, the forces are not too high. But of course, this is the, 
this is this, uh, let's say, the sporty nature of the boat. What I would also like to show you today is how the boat behaves if you are really, if you decide to, to go for some easy downwind cruising, something like that. So I leave this one fixed here. I can I can sit on the lee. And enjoy afternoon cruise. So when you decided to steer in the lee side like now, in this case you would keep the you would keep the, the Jenaker sheet on the cleat and uh, I will show you one system we have here. So you will trim the sail from here um, and because of this um, setup, oh, because of the setup of the blocks here, you can simply turn on the ratchet block and in this case, you can easily trim the sail with, in, the, in these light conditions and even in few a few knots of wind more just simply with your hand without using winches. All the way in the back of the cockpit there is the tiller cover which I didn't mention so far. So of course on the technical side this for, for first function is to cover the steering system underneath so that you wouldn't accidentally step on it. Uh, but of course it's also having a very important cruising function because when you are sailing downwind like now, maybe not as a houseman, but if you're in team of two or more, I can really imagine myself very comfortably laying down here and enjoying the ride. And if I would have a beam back here, then I would have a comfort of home sofa 30 centimeters from the water. Actually, a pretty joyful place, place to be. From the day's conditions, you cannot really see how, how safe this boat is and how, especially regarding the control that the twin steering system gives you. Uh, but for that, I'm inviting you to check the first 24S Seascape Edition walkthrough, where I'm sailing in much higher, at much higher wind speeds. Uh, but the, the tiller system, the hull, uh, actually everything except the rig is identical. So you can also get a very good idea how it works, uh, how it works when the wind, uh, when, when with a stronger wind in that video. So in the start of this video, I've said that the mission of the seven incarnation of uh, famous Beneteau first range is making modern sailing experience accessible to everyone. And I'm pretty sure that uh, this is one of unique, uh, one of best performing uh, micro cruisers on the market. You will be again and again surprised by the performance and the sailing, uh, sailing um, experience of this boat uh, while she's still offering all the key amenities you could expect on 7 meter 30 boat. Um, of course, keep in mind all the safety features I've mentioned, unsinkable, and so the swinging kill system, which is making it completely trailable. So all in all, it's really a lot of smart features, a lot of gadgets, and of course, a lot of solutions, which gives you really a lot of freedom in a way, how you want to use the boat, where you want to go, and how you would like to sail. Um, I hope that I prove my statements throughout the video. Uh, and um, of course, since I'm since I finished uh, finished recording for today, and as you can see, it's absolutely magnificent um, magnificent um, day. Uh, I cannot help myself not to not to um, not to go sailing for a little bit more. Uh, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, enjoy sailing wherever, however you do it, and. Uh, Fair winds.